Hey people, welcome to another day of experimentation. Today I'm going to play around with a new topology for a Tesla coil. A guy by the name of Archangel, that's his YouTube channel name and his Facebook channel name, has been working on Tesla coils and we're both collaborating on this project. So both of us are involved in this work. So please check it out. So this is our project. Uh, a Tesla coil, which is what this is, is an air core transformer. And what, it mean, what that means is there's an air gap between your primary winding and your secondary winding. In a regular transformer, there's iron or ferrite or some other material that couples these two, two things together. But with a Tesla coil, you've got air. So if there is an alternating electric current that travels through the primary coil, that generates an alternating magnetic field. The magnetic field travels through the, the air gap here and reaches the secondary. And what it does is it induces electricity to flow in the windings of the secondary coil. Now the secondary has a lot more windings than the primary. And um, so the voltage output of the secondary is a lot greater than the voltage input to the primary. Now, each of these systems is an LC circuit, which means a capacitor and a uh, inductor. And so the capacitance of this is basically the inherent capacitance of the wire itself. And the, the inductance is the windings. And with this, the inductance is the number of turns and width of this coil. And then you've got physical capacitors here. So if the frequency that this oscillates at gets close to the frequency that that oscillates at, you get maximum trans transfer of energy into this coil, which generates very high voltages. It's basically um, being driven off a ZVS driver. These things are cheap. Uh, you can get them on eBay for about $30. So that's it. That little thing right here with those two capacitors, is a, is a ZVS driver, but the, the original capacitors that you can see there, I, des I desoldered those and replaced them with these much smaller value capacitors to give it a higher frequency so that it could run a Tesla coil. Um, so that's basically the mod that we did. And um, so basically in this case, there's about 75 nanofarads of capacitors instead of two microfarads, which is what it came shipped with. Um, and the small coil that I have here uh, was made for another project. It was just sitting on the shelf, so I figured I'll just try it out. And um, I tested its resonant frequency using an oscilloscope, and this small coil resonates at 342 kilohertz without a top load on it. The, uh, this coil, which technically could be an induction heater coil, was connected to the outputs of the CVS driver with these smaller caps. This thing can be tapped, so I tapped it. You can see my tap point, where is it? Right there, to give me exactly the same frequency as the secondary coil resonance. So they're both resonating at the same frequency. So it's, it's essentially double resonant, um, which is good uh, for maximum energy transfer. And then the base of the secondary coil, this red wire here, is connected to earth ground. Most uh, Tesla coils that you see have a top load. Let me show you what I mean by a top load. This is a top load. So here's a Tesla coil I built with a top load, which, which is a kind of uh, just a metal donut, and it acts as a capacitor. So the initial plan was to put a top load on this one as well. Um, but Archangel, who I've been working with on this project, found that if you have a, a top load, you can't really get spontaneous breakout. So I did away with putting a top load on this as well. Here's one connection to the primary, and the other one is that tap point on the back. And you connect those to the output of the ZVS. If the connection is the wrong direction, it won't resonate properly. So you have to experiment and switch the connections if it doesn't resonate properly. And that's what uh, I found last night. Um, that that directionality is important. 
So between the two of us, between Archangel and myself, um, we've come up with this. Um, Archangel's is a little bit bigger and a different type of setup. And uh, so I've connected this up to rectified mains, which comes from this capacitor and diode setup here. And then I have a voltmeter and amp meter connected in the circuit as well. So let's turn that on. And as you can see, it's reading zero amps and zero volts. So we're gonna check it out right now and uh, gonna see what we can get out of this thing. And uh, let's begin. I'm gonna turn the lights down. Now, in order to start these things up, you need at least 12 volts. And you have to make sure your capacitors are fully charged before you connect connect your power supply to the ZVS driver. So I've got it disconnected. I've got it up to 27 volts in this case, and we're just gonna connect it up right now. So let me do that. Okay, more power. Sixty-four volts, thirteen amps. See it right there. Let's check my transistors. They're just barely lukewarm. The caps are cool. And I've got a little fan running on it. So you can definitely push some power through this thing. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Let's get this uh, tube. So here's a fluorescent tube and it, I can go pretty far away from it so there's a very strong electric field associated with it still glowing even now and I'm a few feet away see that's still glowing okay I've turned down the power quite a bit now and I've got like a small tube of xenon gas here and I'm gonna put it near the coil, let's see what that does. Oh, look at that. It's kind of out of focus. That's really interesting, the patterns of plasma in the xenon filled tube. It's really pretty. And I can bring it quite a distance on the coil and it still keeps going. So this is a little tube of xenon. Let's see what happens with a regular light bulb. This is gonna be interesting. Okay, now we're gonna try out this small iron motor. I made this road out of a, the head of a screw and some copper wire. You can balance it on the tip. The irons spraying off have mass and they should be able to produce mass effect on this iron motor and make it turn. So let's check it out.
Well folks, thanks for watching. Please leave comments and please don't forget to like and subscribe.